Hi everyone, today we are going to make Golem's Cave. And to start with, we'll do the pocket insert. And this is a Tim Holtz Sizzix cobblestone embossing folder. And this is what I use to get the effect of the cave wall. So I'm just going to emboss these pages here. You could use any type of stone material or if you wanted to hand draw the stones, that would work as well. So I did a couple of different colors to see which one might work best with my project. And I decided that the gray works best. So it's very simple. We're just doing some layering effects. We're gonna color the stone wall to give it some dimension. And we'll start by using the gray crayon just to outline some of the stones. And I've sped up a lot of the video so you don't have to watch a great deal of the tedious work of circling stones with the different mediums. Once we do that, I'm going to switch over to a black watercolor pencil. And I'm just going to go around the random stones again, as many as you want. It doesn't matter, I just want some depth in the stones with a little bit darker color. And I was hoping the gray crayon would give some uh, dimension as well and that the watercolor paint wouldn't really seep into where the crayons were. And I'm just going around and adding the water. Again, nothing too neat or perfect. I want this to look like a, an old stone wall in a cave. And once we're done with this, I took some various inks, some walnut stain, some vintage photo, and the stays on brown is a little more permanent. And I had tried that. And I like that as well. So just use what you have in your supplies. And I'm not going over all of the stones. I'm going over certain parts of it. And I decided to go ahead and use this edge and just darken the pocket a little bit more. And as you see, just random shadows. When I finished this, I realized I needed to highlight some of the tops of the stones to give it a little bit more of a realistic look. So I just used, I had a white gel pen, but I'm sure you can use any number, white crayon, something else, a white pastel crayon would work as well. And so that essentially finishes the cave for us. And you can see the difference here. So the next step, I decided I wanted one of the journal cards to come through the cave and I decided I wanted, <coughs> sorry, an eye to poke out of the cave. So cut through both layers here around the eye. That was really the easiest way for me to make sure that I had an exact match inside of my pocket. And I just took my craft knife here and cut a little piece off that wasn't coming out of the pocket. You might have to fiddle with this a little bit, but it's not difficult, just take your time. And that is what I was looking for. So I'm just going to trim off a little edge here and get it ready. While I was looking at this, I decided that it needed just a little bit more dimension to the cave wall. So I decided if I emboss some of the stones, it might give it that wet look that you see uh, inside of the cave. And I just picked random stones and embossed it. And if you don't, you know, like what you've done, you can go back and add more. I did some off camera just so it wouldn't take so much time to pick random stones and emboss. 
but here you can see it's just random. Had a little spill with the embossing powder, so I'm just going to clean it up a little bit around the stones. This is probably because it's still a little bit damp from when I used the watercolor pencil. And you can see the stones are becoming more shiny. I just used the clear embossing powder on this and I really like how it turned out. And I, I did more. So here we're just gonna do the pocket. So I taped my journal card to the back so that I can see where the eye is and create my journal card, or my journal pocket, sorry. So I'm just gonna cut around this pocket. And what I learned after doing this is I made my pocket a little small. So next time I would put the glue a little further out on the edges because it was a little bit difficult to get my journal card in and out of the tight space. So it was too late for this particular project, but see how I put the tape right next to the journal card? Next time I would not do that. I was trying to make sure the card would line up with the eye and the hole that it's supposed to be in. And so that was a, a testing <laughs> error. You can see here, it's a little bit of a struggle to get it in just right with that tape so close, but it'll go in. So I'm just gonna add a little tab to make it easier to pull this card in and out of the pocket. And there is the journal card. So what we have next is to make our paper doll, which is Golem. I'm going to cut out one of the larger pieces and I have no idea why my camera switched lighting here. So I apologize for the change in lighting. It was a different time of day and that might've been a part of it, but it could not be fixed. So I'm just going to cut around Golem, basically like a fussy cut. If you have one of the brother cut and scans, you could certainly use that as well. So what I want to do is I want to back him with some of the book pages out of the Lord of the Rings. And so I'm just going to glue him onto the back before I finish fussy cutting. And I have glue all over my hands. Nails are a wreck. <laughs> I played some volleyball before uh, starting this project. So again, I apologize for that. But once you're in the middle of a, a project, it's hard to stop and, and step away. And so here we'll just go ahead and fussy cut him out. So I'm just using my craft knife to come into some of these white spaces and you can cut it out or not. I just decided it would give this paper doll a little bit more uh, interest if I took out some of the white paper. I did do a black, uh, I guess, shading around the edges and I didn't really like that. So I'm just going to leave this one in a white color. And so we'll just continue to cut out some of these small pieces.
I started making this Hobbit journal and realized that I didn't have the papers that I wanted or the elements. So it took me about three weeks to go in and work with Photoshop to try to figure out what it was I wanted. And some of these elements are more than what I expected. And so I've enjoyed making new projects with them. So if you just cut around a little bit of the hair, it helps give it a little more realistic look, I think. More of the paper doll feel that I was going for with him. I love these. I will put on, if I didn't put on the book pages, I'd leave it plain and make it, put a note in and drop it in. Lunchbox, kids notes, uh, briefcase, just little notes to let somebody know that you were thinking about them today. And so these paper dolls are really versatile. So as you can see, it's a little bit tedious, but worth the little bit of effort that it takes. I will put a link to the DigiKit below in case anyone is looking for these particular elements. And just a little bit of cleanup work here. I want to get a little bit closer. And so I wanted him to also have sort of a glossy look as though, you know, he's in the cave and, and pop his colors a little bit more. So I'm just going to use that clear embossing powder. And I am going to do two layers of this to get him exactly how I want. And I've made four or five of these now, so they look better and better every time I make one. The last one I made, I had the heat gun a little bit close to the paper and it put some scorch marks, but I didn't mind the scorch marks because it was in parts of the, uh, the white cardstock area. So it's a good start, but I wanted to do another layer here. And I just sped this up so that you didn't have to watch the whole process in real time. And as you can see, this just creates a nice layer on top of him. And it's made the paper doll just a little bit more crisp. So here's our pocket. And here is our paper doll. And now what we need to do is attach it to our signature page. So I'm just going to use the golem page in the kit and make this page. So I wanted to ink the inside of the page. I didn't want it white. So I'm just going to use a little bit of the distress oxide around the page. So there's black and brown. And then what I decided is I could use the golem paper doll behind the page and give myself an opportunity to create a shadow of golem on the page where the pocket will not be. So that's what you see here. Section. And so there's our golem shadow, which worked out perfectly for that.
So I'm just going to put a little bit more of the black to distress this page. And again, this is totally up to you. I just wanted a little bit more of the black to go with the stone wall since I selected a gray to go with it. And just trying to come in and work with some of the corners and make it a little bit more grungy looking. I'm really happy with the way the image of Golem came out on the back of that. So now we'll just start assembling the pocket cave or the cave pocket. I'm going to put it on the right side of my signature page. And I want to make sure that my journal card can come out. So I'll place everything. And I'm going to glue right around the edge uh, of this pocket. But I also need to make sure that Golem will slide from the top. So I'll just lay him here as a guide for the glue. After my experience with doing the tape a little too close, I decided I would be more cautious and put the glue on the very edge here. And this is why I always have glue all over my fingers and, and desk, I'm sure. And I'm just going to sort of flatten out the glue so that it sticks and dries fairly quickly. And I'm just going to slide this pocket on. I love making interactive pages in my journals and this one ended up being one of my favorite interactive pieces. So what I'll do is I'll put Gollum in there and keep the tab on the top of his head so that He's easy to pull out as well. And I just added that to the, to the top to make it easier to pull out. And so here is the finished product. And I appreciate you watching and thank you.